Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here tonight to film a recent reads and currently reading video. It's been a while, a few weeks since I've filmed one of these so I just wanted to give you an update on what I've been reading recently. Um, so let's get right to it. The first thing I'd like to mention is, and I'm not going to go into these in detail because I think I'm going to film um, a review of all three of these books together, but on audiobook I have been listening to the Tawny Man Trilogy by Robin Hobb and that's um, Fool's Aaron, Golden Fool, and the last one, Fool's Fate. I'm just uh, getting ready to start Fool's Fate on audio. I've completed the other two and I'm really enjoying them very much on audio and like I said I plan to do a separate video talking about those three things by themselves. Other than that I have finished um, The State of the Onion which is book one in a cozy mystery series about a assistant chef at the White House named Olivia Parras and um, this is written by Julie Heisey, and this was, um, I don't read a lot of cozy mysteries, but this was very enjoyable. It wasn't, you know, the best thing I've ever read, but it was an enjoyable way to spend a few hours. Um, I loved the setting of the White House for a mystery series. I thought that was really good. In this installment, um, Olivia gets wrapped up in, um, she thinks she's helped the Secret Service stop an assassination attempt on the president. Um, it turns out there's a lot more going on than simply a straightforward assassination attempt. There's spies and uh, Middle East peace and all kinds of things happening that she sort of gets involved in um, unbeknownst to her uh, when she uh, does an action at the very beginning of the book. And I won't say anything about it because it'll be spoilers. Um, but I did enjoy it and if I come across book two in the series in my travel somewhere, I will probably pick it up. And the next thing I finished recently was an ebook, and that is Killers of the Flower Moon by David Graham. This is a nonfiction book, and the, the subtitle is The Osage Murders and the Birth of the FBI. This book was um, a National Book Award, uh, on the National Book Award prize list this past year. It's gotten lots of praise. It's been talked about. Um, quite a bit on booktube. Uh, I read it as an ebook from my library and I in, I liked it but I, I struggled with it um, and I think that part of the reason was because I read it on ebook um, and I started reading it on my phone which isn't ideal for me. I don't tend to unless it's like a fiction or something that I've read in the past I struggle with reading books on my phone so I think uh, Killers of the Flower Moon suffered from just format, um, the format that I chose to read it in. And the other reason was there was a ton of names to keep track of, especially at the beginning, and I found myself confused a lot of the time about who was who, and whether they were bad guys or good guys. Um, the story itself about the Osage Indian tribe and um, the fact that in the 20s and 30s they were um, some of the richest people in the world because oil was found on their reservation and each member of the tribe got head rights um, which basically meant that they got a share of the profit in the oil that was being um, drilled from beneath their lands um, and then somebody started killing them off and this nonfiction book sort of details the investigation of the FBI into who was murdering um, these Indians and Basically, it kind of talks about not only the murders of the Indians, but also the the development of the FBI into the agency that we know it today. And it talks a bit about J. Edgar Hoover. Um, is that his name? You know who I mean. I've forgotten his name now. I think it's J. Edgar Hoover, but it could be wrong, and I'll write it on the screen if I messed it up. Um, but that part was really interesting as well. I almost wish there was... I kind of made me want to go read a book about the FBI and how that all got going and the, the sort of drama and scandal that surrounded that whole thing. Um, but like I said, I did, I found myself I would not be, have the urge to pick it up again once I set it down and I, I do believe it was the format more so than the book itself, although I did struggle um, with the amount of names of characters and trying to keep track of them all. Um, but 
in the end, I did uh, really enjoy it. I read the last bit of the book I read in two separate settings, you know, 100 pages each, and that I think worked a lot better for me than picking it up and reading a few pages at a time on my phone. Um, so that is it for what I've recently read, and now on to what I'm currently reading. I just today picked up, um, let's see if we can even see this. You can get it to zoom in, there we go. This is allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson, and this is a YA um, novel that I first heard about on uh, Simon Savage's channel. He really liked this book last year, and I thought it sounded amazing. Um, and it's a book about a young girl who has um, allegedly killed a baby um, who was in her mother's care. Her mother was babysitting uh, a two-month-old baby, and she was nine years old. Um, this young girl and uh the baby dies um while in the mother's care and the the nine-year-old um the nine-year-old mary is accused of the crime and is actually put in jail when the story opens she's in um basically a, a group home type setting um has been in jail for many years and we're starting to like hear her story about um, what happens. She refers to herself as a murderer um, and that's what you know when you start the book is that she's um, been accused and gone on trial and has been put in jail for the murder of this two month old. Um, I've only read the first chapter. Very engaging writing style. I'm really enjoying it. I think I'm gonna really fly through that one even though it is on ebook. Like I said, I do better um, with ebooks that are fiction um, than I do sometimes with nonfiction. So then what else am I reading? Another mystery, um, both the State of the Onion and the Killers of the Flower Moon um, fit in with March Mystery Madness. So um, let me hit this again, try to get this lighting. Sorry guys, the lighting is not great in here tonight. Um, so the other mystery that I'm reading for March Mystery Madness is Poor City Black and White by Jerry Boyle. This is a police procedural, um, the second in a series. I never did read um, the first one because I couldn't find it anywhere. And that is um, something that I don't generally tend to do. I generally tend to always try to read series in order. And there may be, um, I'm not loving this and it may be because I didn't pick up book one, but I think it's more because the main character, um, whose name is Brandon Blake, a young man who's just joined the police force in Portland, Maine, um, is not very likable. And I don't know why all of these police procedurals that you read with a male main character, the guy has to be such a jerk in the beginning of the series. You know, he's always moody and dark and, you know, has some mysterious past that makes him be a jerk and hold everybody at arm's length. And it's just tiring and very much you know typical and so I'm like 85 pages into it and while I'm enjoying like the mystery part of this which is that um a drug addicted woman um is having a party in her apartment the police get called this Brandon Blake and his partner get called to this break up this party and tell him to keep the noise down turns out the mom this this woman is a mother of a young baby um and the baby is missing the baby has gone missing while she's been having this party and she has not she was either passed out or she didn't realize that something somebody came in and took her baby during this party um and so the rest of the story unfolds from there with this brandon blake um trying to find out what's happened to this baby along with his partner and um the rest of the portland police force um, i was interested to pick this up because i'm always interested to read books that are set in maine uh but like I said, the main character is really irritating, so uh, I don't know. I'll probably continue to read this. It's an easy read. It's very quick to read, so and it's only like 270 pages or something, so I'll probably just read it to the end to see what happens with the baby because, honestly, at this point, that's all I really care about. Um, and then the other new thing that I've picked up for Women's History Month is Women in Science, 50 Fearless Pioneers Who Changed the World. Um, this was written and illustrated by Rachel Ignatsky, um, and I just love this book. This book is so awesome. I don't want to lose my bookmark, but I just want to show you. So on 
the left hand side or yeah the left hand side of the page as you look at this you have an illustration of the woman in question and then on the right hand side of the page you have the the short biography write up of what the woman did in the science field and then all around are these little uh sketches and illustrations and there's little um captions that describe what the woman uh did the advances that the woman helped make in different fields like this um let me see this woman mary anning who was a fossil collector and a paleontologist um and you know some of these say uh she sold fossils to noble gentlemen her life inspired many modern fictional stories um people called fossils devil's toenails and snake stones and then you have this you know the text over here that gives more um, background into the person's life uh, I'm just very much enjoying dipping it dipping in and out of this I very much like the illustration style it's very colorful and interesting and lots of fun to just look at and I just think the cover of this is awesome um Patrice Jones, I believe, told me that this is actually a series and there's um, another book, Women in Sports, and probably even more. So I'm going to be keeping my eye out um, for the Women in Sports one because I think that's something both my daughter and I will really enjoy. Um, and then the other two books you've seen before, I'm still working on, Come As You Are, um, The Surprising New Science That Will Transform Your Sex Life by Emily Nagoski. Um, this is something that I'm reading through slowly, but I uh, am enjoying. It's not because I'm not enjoying it. It's just something that I'm sort of working my way through slowly so I can really grasp everything that she's talking about. And then also 1493, Uncovering the New World that Columbus Created by Charles C. Mann. Um, again, this is historical um, nonfiction detailing how... Um, trade routes and different materials went have started basically how globalization started after Columbus and um, the other explorers discovered the new world um, this is super interesting uh, I've been reading it slowly again mostly in the evenings this is usually my before bed book um, I'm in the section right now that's talking all about potatoes and how potatoes which were um, originally developed in South America, in the Andes, um, have spread around the world, and how in, in the Andes there's hundreds if not thousands of varieties of potato, but in when it got, you know, distributed out in the other parts of the world, it became more of a monoculture, and because it was a monoculture, it was more um, susceptible to disease and different things like that, and so into the... Um, Irish potato famine uh, and other things now into some of the different parasites and bites and and different things that we've uh, are still dealing with in the United States. Um, specifically, one of them was is um, the Colorado potato beetle that we're still dealing with in the United States today. All because instead of keeping and maintaining the different varieties of potatoes as they had and still do in the Andes. We've gone to monoculture, agriculture, with um, heavy application of fertilizer and pesticides. Fascinating. Like, each little subject within this book um, has been so fascinating. It talked about the silver, how silver became the first global monetary um, currency, and how that all happened. And now we're into more agricultural stuff. Super fascinating. Can't recommend this highly enough. So that's the things that I've recently read and what I'm currently reading. Um, I hope that you've all been reading some really great books. I've very much been enjoying everybody's videos on um, the Women's Prize long list, which was just announced today or yesterday. I can't remember, but I've been watching everybody's videos on that, and that's got me super excited to read a lot of the books on that list, which I have not read even one bad Heidi um but I do have Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine on the TBR so I'll probably be picking that one up pretty soon um and in the meantime I uh, hope you're all doing well and I will talk to you later